for the first phase of the pandemic uh, and its vaccination program, we are suggesting that vaccines are offered in order to protect people who are most at risk of dying from COVID-19, as well as to protect health and social care services, because by doing so, we also protect lives. The advice is divided into two main parts. The first is to offer vaccination according to the estimated risk of dying from COVID-19. The risk of dying from COVID-19 is very strongly associated with age. Age is by far the single most important factor in terms of risk from COVID-19. The second strand to the advice is regarding implementation of the vaccination program. And we advise that due attention is paid locally to mitigating health inequalities. I'll say more of that in a moment. On the next slide, you will see the prioritization order in terms of the offer of vaccination. Residents in care homes for older adults and care home workers are the highest priority. Following that are those 80 years of age and above alongside frontline healthcare and social care workers. Then come those 75 years of age and above, followed by those 70 years of age and above alongside people who are clinically extremely vulnerable because of specific health conditions. They're followed by people who are aged 65 years and above, and then individuals who are aged 16 to 64 years with underlying health conditions that also put them at risk of COVID-19, but where those conditions are not already represented in the conditions putting somebody at clinically extremely vulnerable risk. The prioritization order then continues down the age groups until all those aged 50 years and above are included. This is phase one of the program. In phase one, we hope that 90 to 99% of people who are at risk of dying from COVID-19 will be included or covered. The next part of the advice relates to implementation of the program. We advise that local NHS providers, local public health teams, and local leaders work together to address community needs and local um, uh, needs. We suggest that community teams work together to mitigate against health inequalities that might occur in relation to ethnicity, deprivation, or access to health care. We also recognize that there may be operational reasons why the prioritization needs to be more flexible. And this may relate to vaccine characteristics or vaccine supply or exceptional personal circumstances. Overall, we have good news today. We have a vaccine that is acceptably safe and effective. Good vaccine uptake will save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.